Ladies and gentlemen, this is Sojourners G. I'm bringing you the long awaited video which so many of you have texted me and emailed me requesting for this video on academic assessment, right? The academic assessment in OTS. This will help you succeed if you can just start studying like right now because the academic assessment is cramped down into two weeks and it is rough. I do have a, a lieutenant right now that is also a soldier nurse and he is going through it right now. It's just barely a week that we graduated, but I think that I should put this information out. That way you don't have to go through what I went through. That way you can do better than I did, okay? For that, because I understand the importance of this topic, I had to bring our academic officer, Lieutenant Martin, to go in depth with what that office entails and what the academic structure in OTS is really about. Uh, he is, you know, just in summary, we had two academic assessments in our class 2005. We had two paper briefs and two graded papers. So this is a lot of writing, uh, you know, speeches and all that good stuff. But then the assessments though, you know, that's something you definitely want to start studying as of now. Uh, Lieutenant Martin is going to explain. I hope this is going to help you. If you have any question at the end of the video, don't hesitate to, to put a comment, send me an email. And I'm sure that Brother Martin you know, I call him my brother because guess what? What took us through officer training school wasn't just the academic assessment, but the prayer sessions that we had. We prayed a lot. You know, we, we lifted each other up. So he is indeed my brother. And if you have questions for him, particularly, just put it on. I'm going to try to get him involved so he can respond to your questions. And if he's very busy, of course, I will do my best to respond to that. Enjoy and let me know what you think. Thank you. Soldier nurse. Peace. Hey, future OTS students. My name is Second Lieutenant Andrew Martin. Uh, right now, I'm a week out from graduating from OTS class 2005, which was quite possibly the best experience of my life so far. I can't stress it enough. It was a lot of fun. I learned a ton about myself, and I made many potentially lifelong friends uh, in my flight and in my squadron, and even from the whole wing from other squadrons. It was a great experience for learning how I operate in groups and learning how to be an officer in the Air Force. Right? So today I'm going to talk to you about academics at OTS. We're going to talk about the position of academics officer, basic structure at o academic structure at OTS, and what you want to academically achieve by the end of your experience. And that third point is incredibly important and it'll set the tone for everything you do at OTS. I tr trust me, I promise you. So I had the honor of being academic officer for my flight of 16 trainees, we were Oscar flight. If you volunteer to be the academic officer, I'll call it AO from here on out, expect the following crucial tasks, right? Put your trainees on an effective study schedule and equip them with the tools to succeed on upcoming tests. Provide data and trends for each exam, brief and paper. So there are exams, briefs, and papers. Those are the three main types of assignments you'll be working on. There may be other things along the way, but those three items are really what you want to stress. Provide additional academic materials and structure for trainees who failed any exam, so if failure is below an 80 score on each exam, and to put them back on track for future exams, right? And most importantly, bring the spirit and character of confidence to each flight member under your care to help them mentally and spiritually prepare for the exam. It may sound kind of fluffy, but if you act confident and instill confidence in your flight members, they will thank you for it, you will thank yourself for it, and you'll see it in the test scores, right? So the moments when I let my morale down in the flight were the moments when people started feeling less confident for the exam. You don't want that. Stay positive. So academics officer is a graded leadership position, GLP. You'll hear about these many times in OTS. They're super important. Uh, if you know you're good at academics, this will be a good fit for you. When I raised my hand to volunteer for the position in my flight, when we we're all divvying out responsibilities, it was like it was like Frodo volunteering to take the ring to Mordor. Like, 
I didn't know what I was doing. I had no idea what to expect, but I knew that studying and book work was in my wheelhouse, right? Um, so here I am at pilot training. And it was. Uh, my instructor gave me 90 on my overall work in the position at the end of the course. I earned distinguished graduate as, in total, um, and my flight gave me the nickname professor for my academic work. It's basically a professional title for nerd, which is also true. Uh, so second, OTS, we'll, we'll talk about some basic core structure, right? OTS 2005 had two academic assessments. And I'm not sure how it's going to be for future classes, but for ours, these two academic assessments were condensed down into the first two weeks. So it was really short deadlines, and it was super stressful. Uh, 80 is the minimum passing score for these exams. If you score below an average, average of 80 on both academic assessments or above 80, you're good. If you scored an average of below 80, on the two academic assessments, you had to take a cumulative academic assessment, right? Exam three. The cumulative assessment, as the name suggests, just combines all of the material from the preceding assessments. And if you get an 80 or above on this, you're fine. If you get below 80, you're not going to graduate. Well, you're going to go under probation. Your case is going to go to one of the senior officers at OTS, and you may not graduate. It's a case-by-case -case basis. Uh, these, these assessments are difficult. So do not, do not underestimate them. Keep a good study schedule. Make sure your flight works as a team to learn the material, right? So you'll be studying out in the hallways, in dorm rooms, in common rooms, in your flight room to make sure that you understand these objectives. So if OTS keeps the academic structure the same, you'll be given about a week, a week or a week and a half to study the lesson objectives for each exam. And you may have new material coming in for the exam the day before the exam. It's rough sometimes. Uh, these objectives are described through what they call cognitive examples of cognitive samples of behavior. We call them SOBs, right? They're basically what OTS wants you to remember from each lesson, whether that be national security objectives or professional and professional relationships as an officer. I remember the, uh, the most difficult lesson for most people, including myself, was Air Force leadership because there are just so many. The SOBs contain so many similar sentences and phrasings for each definition, each phrase that you have to remember. It's pretty crazy. Um, and you'll probably find the same thing. So make sure you can remember the definitions of, and statements within each SOB well enough to apply them to scenarios you will be inevitably given on the exam. You'll be looking for keywords and phrases from the definitions within the exam questions, especially if they're scenarios describing how to use these SOBs. So in our class there are also two papers, bullet background paper style, and two briefs, like speeches but really with a lot less pizzazz, if you will. Uh, all I can really say for the papers and the briefs is uh, don't make a template for papers. If your template is incorrect and doesn't abide by what your flight instructor expects of you in your flight, you will doom your whole flight. B. Be detail-oriented. Pay attention to your instructor's requirements for papers and briefs. I cannot stress this enough. Ask questions and follow the Air Force tongue and quill if you don't know specific formatting for a point. Look, look up the tongue and quill after watching this. You'll thank yourself later. Um, that'll give you detailed guidance, right? Uh, have a thorough understanding of Microsoft Word and PowerPoint, or more importantly, rely on a flight member who does for support when you need it. You will have to understand your flight members' strengths and weaknesses to work effectively as a team, especially in the academics phase of OTS. There's, so, there's just so much going on. You'll need to rely on each other. And practice as a flight before each brief. Uh, so you're going to be giving your class, your flight will be in a U-shaped table format in your flight rooms, and you'll be standing in the middle and giving these briefs to your instructor and your flight members. Have each flight member stand in front of the class and give their entire brief, just like you would if your instructor was there. Offer specific constructive feedback to your flight members. So you'll have to work this out with your flight. As AO, you'll likely be in charge of facilitating it. Um, it's not too bad, especially if your flight is motivated like mine was. 
So uh, we'll end this by just talking about like what you want to achieve in academics at OTS. You don't want to pass exams. You want to kill them. You want to get 90s, 95s. You want to shoot for 100. Shoot for the moon. Make flight goals that exceed passing scores. So you'll, your flight instructor will ask you to make flight goals. Um, and your academic officer on a squadron and wing level will ask you to provide flight academic goals. You want to score 90s, 95s, or above. You'll get a feel for it on how well your flight will do. Some flights get a lot of doctors and lawyers who are just naturally good at academics. You may not have that, but know your people who are good at academics. Lean on them to help you out in helping people study. And then set those good goals. Help your flight out. Find answers. Ask questions. Quiz each other. Use apps like Quizlet, quizzes. Quizzes was a lot of fun. And any other academic study materials. Uh, you can make a competition out of it. You can make games out of it. Uh, you can make your own study. Make your own study questions. Make scenarios using the SOBs uh, and the definitions. So you don't just want to study the definitions. You want to be able to make sure. You want to make sure that your flight is able to apply them to specific questions and scenarios. I think that about covers it. If you have any other questions for me or Brother G, don't hesitate to reach out in the comments below. You can probably also find me floating around the OTS Facebook groups. Um, find me, Andrew Martin. Uh, I'm happy to help you out. You'll do great. The Air Force believes in you. I believe in you. Believe in yourself. Thank you for your commitment to serve. You're going to enjoy the heck out of OTS. I know you will. Have a great day. Uh, I hope you liked the video and this is it. I have a bunch of links that have been attached to this uh, video underneath. Just go below and click on those links and start studying, okay? I truly, truly hope that this will help you. Peace, Sojourners.